I'm going to be talking about how I ended up automating my curtains and shouting at my laptop. Um, so I'm lazy. I don't like doing things if I don't have to. And because I'm lazy, automation is fantastic. I can just make something automated, press a button, does it itself. Um, and in mid-2014, I started writing a chatbot that automates things for me. So it does little bits in my house. It sits in a Raspberry Pi, and yeah, I, I tell it to do things, and it does them. Um, so it's called Woodhouse. It's named after the character in Archer, because I was going to name it Jarvis, and then realized it would be a far worse butler than Jarvis was. So Woodhouse. Um, it's modular and extensible. It's Core is just basically a router. It has some core functionality built into it, like uh, broadcasting, preference storage, scheduling, so it can do tasks on a certain time. And then there are two types of modules that actually make it up. There are plugins that do all the heavy lifting, so you can get it to, to send a message just from you sending something to it. Or it can connect to APIs and do something, so you could get it to do your your builds on Travis if you really wanted to. Or you can get it to interface with hardware. As long as it's possible with JavaScript or the Node ecosystem, then it's possible to do it with this. And then there are interfaces, which are the other type of module, which it's basically chat systems. It's ways of talking to the chatbot. So I've currently written them for Slack, for Google, uh, for Google Hangouts, for HipChat, and Facebook. But again, if a chat system has a way for you to build stuff against it in JavaScript, you can, you can connect to it. And then it's all open source and written in JavaScript, because why not? It's all MIT, and it's all on GitHub, and it's written in JavaScript, runs on Node, because at the time, I was interested in learning more JavaScript, learning more Node stuff, and I saw it as a great opportunity. So in the beginning, I only wanted to download movies. And this ties in to my friend Tom over there, who he, we were sat in the boardroom at the previous company we both worked at one day. And he, was, he had his iPad in front of him. And it was connected by VPN to a Raspberry Pi he had at home. And was downloading movies, just queuing them up and like searching the internet, finding a torrent and putting it in. And it, it seemed like a lot of work to me. And I already had stuff at home that I could just give a name of a film to, and it would go and download stuff for me. And I just wanted a system that I could go, OK, here's the name of a film. It responds saying, here's an INDB link. Is this the film you meant? I just respond, yes, or no, if it's not, and it'll give me the next film. And then it goes off and downloads it. And I don't have to deal with trying to remember a film that I wanted to download, because I have a terrible memory. And then somehow, I'd never, I didn't end up doing that to begin with. I automated my lamps. I, d I can't actually figure out how I got to that stage. Um, it was just a strange jump of logic. Um, and yeah, this is my lamps being controlled by sending a message. And then I'll t send a message again, and it'll turn on again. And I actually use this every day. It, it sits and runs in my house. That's my live system I'm sending messages to. And it's great, because I can walk down the street. And as I'm getting to my house, so tonight, I'll walk down the street and just pull out my phone, send a message. Then I can walk in the door, and it's light. And I'm not like stumbling over things and like trying to find the light switch and stuff like that. And it's really useful for, for that stuff. So these are the plugs. They're from China, so I have an adapter, um, which makes it super safe. Um, they cost they cost about fifteen pounds. Um, so that I just bought one because it was fifteen pounds and thought I'll have a poke at it. Um, after poking around for a bit, I found out you could telnet into it. It left that open. Uh, couldn't do a lot from that point, and then found out that there was a Google group of people that had bought these plugs and had been hacking around with them for a few months. Um, they'd found the SSH password for it, and you could SSH in, and it runs OpenWRT, which is like a router firmware, but it's Linux, so you can just drop Linux strips on it. And it's got very limited memory, so you can't just install everything you like, but you can run basic scripts. 
and it's got a web server built into it. So you can hit a page and make the relay turn on. So that's how mine works. It just, I have a page on the plug. And I can go to that page, and it will turn it on. And if I pass it a different parameter, it'll turn it off. And then it's also, because it, again, it's Linux, it can sit and broadcast every two minutes, is what I've got it set to, saying, here's my name. Here are all the details about me. Here's my IP address. So it's kind of configuration free. I can just configure the plug, chuck it onto the network, and then Woodhouse will listen for it, and it'll work. So I can add a plug at any point. It'll just keep working. And then after a little while, I started adding other little bits to make, make it useful. So I eventually did add, end up adding the, the film downloading and TV downloading, and then never actually used it, because Netflix was a huge thing at that point, and it's far easier to use Netflix. And then reminders, so I can tell it, like, in 20 minutes, remind me to check the pizza, because burnt pizza's terrible. <laughs> And then, like, checking if websites are up. Instead of, like, checking it on yours and then saying, hey, Tom, is this website working for you? No. You can use, like, down for everyone or just me. So I send this a message. It checks it for me. And then GIF searches, because who doesn't like GIF searches? Random GIFs to send to people. Um, and then I started having all these ideas. I, I could control everything with it. And I didn't. I ended up rewriting it all because I actually looked at the code and thought, I've, been sp I've spent this time on it, and I've just been chucking code at the code base. And it's a blob of code. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. And it's really difficult to work with. But it actually meant that I got the chance to build it out modularly and use ES6 and do it properly and have actual time to think about it. And then, so the first time I gave this talk was back in November last year at Leeds.js. Um, and I wanted to talk about something new for the system. So I had, well, I had six months notice and then wrote it in about two weeks um, and built the thing in two weeks. And yeah, so I wanted something new. So I automated my curtains. Um, so this is me sending a message to Woodhouse and opening my curtains. And like, yeah, it's, and that would be closing them again. And there's no noise playing, but it's really loud and creepy because it's just like, <laughs> um, And like, I had to buy a stepladder and stuff for that. And I, it, yeah. So besides the stepladder, these are the parts for it. It's fairly simple. Um, so it's like some string and like some plastic wheels and a Tupperware box and a servo and this ESP8266, which is a wireless t Arduino type board, but it's like two pounds from China. And you can just get a load of them and chuck them on your network. And it's, you can control stuff over your network for two pounds, which is ridiculous. Um, it runs, so the hardware, there's an operating, or a firmware for this hardware called um, Mongoose OS. And it's, it lets you write JavaScript on the hardware. They've abstracted all the complicated actual hardware stuff away. And I can just do like turn on or something like that. I can't actually remember the code from it. But it, it takes a lot of the complexities of actual that, hard, that code and lets me use a language I know. Um, and the actual way it works, it's fairly simple because there's just a loop of string. And whatever way the server rotates, the string changes, well, it opens or closes the curtains. And it's a terrible design, but I threw it together in like a couple of weeks. And I want to redesign it and rebuild it. And I've thought how to do it. I just need to get around to it because I'm lazy. <laughs> and then I got bored over Christmas and started shouting at my laptop. And it wasn't out of frustration at things not working. It was legitimately to get voice control. So, oh, I need sound for this. Please work. Warehouse. Yes. Turn off lamps. Chair lamp it's got the worst voice ever because I use Linux at home and there's a speech, Warehouse. a text speech thing called Festival, and that's the default voice. So yeah, that's the worst voice ever. 
but so yeah. <laughs> um, but that is voice control in JavaScript. It oh Node. So it has a Node library for doing an offline hot word. So I'm not having it constantly listen to me. I can just shout Woodhouse, and it will make the noise to say I'm listening. Uh, and then the rest of the actual complex speech to text is done by Google because they have a free tier it, for 60 minutes. And they have a lot more data than I do. There are open source systems for doing uh, speech to text, but you need to train it yourself. And I, yeah, it just, I couldn't be bothered. It's Google. <laughs> um, but you could plug in any, any speech to text you wanted. You could use Azure or Amazon or whatever. And then it just, I've designed it in a way that I can scatter Raspberry Pis around my house with voice control and then shout it out and it'll send it back to the central instance. So I can have one of these units in every room, which is my ideal goal, that I can just put it everywhere. And then, yeah, it talks back in the worst voice ever. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's the story so far, but it's only the beginning. Um, I'm still spending time, or I'm still getting to the end of the rewrite because I'm lazy again. Um, <laughs> you're seeing a theme here. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I want to do a load of things for this future. I just have a, like a, a note of all these things I want to do. So one is I want to add an extra module type of data providers. So I can have like a, a light sensor or a motion sensor or things like that just scattered around my house so that it feeds data into the core system. Plugins can subscribe to it or something like that and then use that data. And then after that, I could have like a recipe type system. So I can say, when my phone connects to the network and it's dark outside, then I should turn on my lamps and close my curtains, because otherwise I'd have to do that myself. And I'm lazy. Um, and then more hardware. So eventually I'd love to get it like that I can unlock my door with it and have light switches controlled by it and thermostats and stuff like that. And then the other week I was thinking how cool it would be to put it in my car, which is slightly terrifying. Um, but not to control my car, because that would be an awful idea. Um, and then, yeah, I am generally terrified of the prospect of home ownership, not because of the, the things like having a mortgage or having to be a grown-up and being responsible, but because I'm probably going to burn it down. <laughs> I, and so, yeah, it's, it's, but it's kind of exciting at the same time, because I, it, it would give me the opportunity to do all these projects I want to do. And yeah, so at the start of this talk and throughout it, I've been saying that I'm lazy. And it's kind of wrong, because I'm the stupid kind of lazy who will spend hundreds and hundreds of hours working on software to make it, or to make it do things that I don't have to do. Simple, simple little things. So I'm obviously not lazy. I'm just not driven to do those things. Um, so yeah, that's the end of it, and I don't know if we've got time for questions.